The lecture led on running the fmax test, or otherwise known as Hartley's fmax test, for uh, verifying homogeneity of variance in uh, in a two group situation. Uh, here, I'm going to load some data from off of the course website on GitHub uh, into a data frame, which I'm calling df, and we're going to create two groups of data. Uh, we're going to call one of them uh, filter one, and I'm just going to arbitrarily um, pick. Uh, half of the data to be uh, in one group and then the other half to be in the other group. As you can see, we have uh, 30 observations here and in the in column X, uh, we have just basically a, a unique identifier for each of the rows. Let's call it participant number or something. Uh, so I'm gonna use that uh, column and we're gonna pick everything that's uh, over 15 there. And into filter two, uh, we're gonna pick everything that's um, that's uh, equal to or less than 15. So this way, each of the filters uh, have 15 uh, observations, and I have I have two groups of data uh, to <laughs> to run my fmax test. Um, now, uh, first, I'll show it to you using kind of a, a very crude or clunky way, and then we'll uh, we'll uh, I'll also run it in a in a more automated fashion, so that there's less chance of making mistakes. So generally the idea is to run the variance on your filters. Uh, now we need to pick a, a dependent variable. So there are lots to choose from. All of them are continuous variables here. So let's maybe we'll just uh, pick uh, cups caffeine weekly for this purpose here. So uh, cups caffeine weekly, if I run this, we can see that the variance is 74.12. And if I run the uh, filter two, uh, variance, we have another value, Ooh, much smaller variance for the second half. It's complete, completely coincidental given how uh, how arbitrary our, um, our uh, selection of the filter is. Uh, so basically in order to run the fmax test, you just simply pick the, the bigger number and in this case we can see that filter one is bigger and we uh, divide it by uh, the second one uh, which is uh, which is the smaller value in this case, and so here we have an F max test <laughs> of 3.79. Now let me redo it, and and I'll also show you in the second run how to evaluate this number uh, in a, in a little bit more precise way than what I've said in the Q and A session earlier. Um, so let's do something like this. Let's say that uh, I'm going to create a vector. We're going to call a uh, let's call it my variances and let's uh, create a, a, a C function here and let's put our calculations both of them inside this C so we've got uh, a C vector uh, in it we have calculation for filter one variance and filter two variance so when I run this my variance is going to contain two numbers Two numbers in one vector and this is nice because now I don't have to know which one the bigger variance is I can just do something like this I can say pick the bigger variance and see it just picks out the bigger variance and I can also say pick the smaller variance and now it just picks out the smaller variance so I don't have to worry about manually looking up which one the bigger variance is I just have a nice little calculation like that and so now I can run the f max like so I can just say pick the bigger variance for the numerator and divide it by the smaller variance. And when we run this, we actually get the exact same number. So this is basically uh, how simple Hartley's fmax test is. Now you need to know when is uh, homogeneity violated, this assumption, because if it is, then you have to be very careful in interpreting your t-test. Um, I'm going to post a table uh, for you on the Moodle website and on the GitHub website as well, so it's available for everyone. Uh, this is called Hartley's F table, and this one is a lookup table that allows you to decide what your threshold is for uh, the violation of homogeneity of variance. Uh, the columns refer to the number of groups that you have, so in this case we have two groups, and for all t-test uh, uh, t-tests you're only going to be dealing with two groups so we're going to restrict our view just to this column right here um, now we need to also know 
the degrees of freedom for our data because that will determine which value we're going to pick out of here. So let's quickly uh, run our DF calculation. Uh, so I'm just going to use the quick N row and we're going to throw in our data <laughs> frame and we can tell, oops, sorry, DF is calculated by uh, sample size minus one, right? So this is going to be my degrees of freedom. Uh, when I view this, oh, I got a funny value. Oh, sorry, I, I just quickly, I overwrote uh, the original data frame, which is not very good practice, is it? Uh, so here it is again. And now when I view, uh, run degrees of freedom, I can see that my DF is 29. Going back to this uh, table here, uh, 29 would be in between 20 and 30. Uh, here, it's a bit of a judgment call how you deal with it. It's so close to 30 that you could just pick round up and, and, be, and pick 30. You could also take a very conservative view and you could say that, you know, I just want to be really careful. I'm going to pick 20 just because we didn't hit 30. So you could go both ways. You could pick either one of these as your threshold values. And so... Um, this means that if your f max test result is greater than either of these values then you have a problem with homogeneity and in our case it is greater than uh, either 2.46 or 2.07 therefore we have to conclude that uh, that uh, that there is a violation of homogeneity of variance in this data set. Now, one way to deal with it in the t-test is to run your um, t-test with very um, equal variances not assumed, uh, set that uh, argument to false. And that, that often resolves the issue. But if there are very significant issues, if this number is in the hundreds, then you have a much bigger problem to deal with.